One of the most impressive and even intimidating facets of the US military's prowess is its naval nuclear aircraft carriers. Thanks to the work of thousands of engineers, these ships have come to be one of the most secure locations amidst hostilities. Today, we invite you to join us as we take a closer look at how these masters of the sea would fend off an attack, assuming an enemy would be so bold as to try. Due to their sheer power and capacity, aircraft carriers are able to withstand an enemy siege for several months on end, repelling devastating attacks and striking hundreds of targets on a daily basis. Additionally, they are highly autonomous, allowing them to operate successfully without the need to access military bases located on dry land. As of September 2021, there are 45 active aircraft carriers around the world, deployed by 14 navies from different countries. The US Navy itself has 11 of the largest nuclear-powered aircraft carriers in the world. The total surface area of their decks exceeds the total area of the decks on the aircraft carriers of all the other nations combined. What's more, each of these is the platform for up to 90 of the latest fighters, helicopters, and UAVs. In addition to the aircraft carriers, the US Navy also possesses 9 amphibious assault ships for helicopter basing. These can successfully carry up to 20 V STOL fighters. Furthermore, they are comparable in size to medium-sized aircraft carriers currently in service with other countries. The modern US aircraft carrier is akin to an 1100-foot layered cake, comprising a nuclear power plant, a tanker, an arsenal of bombs, and an entire airfield. All this dessert is further adorned with a group of cruisers and destroyers, which protect it from attacks by missiles, fighters, and torpedoes, even if they have to sacrifice themselves in the process. Looming over at more than 1,000 feet, 25 aircraft carrier decks stand as tall as a large office building with flight decks of more than 4 square acres. Yes, their survivability has increased significantly since the Cold War, but military experts are nonetheless beginning to grow uneasy thinking about how these sea giants may eventually become vulnerable as China's power grows. But let's now consider why the Navy really ought not to worry. Aircraft carriers are constantly on the move and they don't exactly go slow. Their speed, 35 miles per hour, is sufficient enough to easily overtake most of even the most modern of submarines. The Nimitz class, for example, can travel within 700 square miles in 30 minutes. And within an hour and a half, this area expands to about 6,000 square miles. Therefore, even detecting an aircraft carrier with its impressive dimensions can come to be the first obstacle for enemies. Then there's the daunting task of calculating everything and aiming. After all, the moment the guns are loaded, the aircraft carrier will already have eyes on targets. Additionally, the vessel will begin maneuvering and changing its course and speed if conditions become more threatening. Former naval officer Tom Collander pointed out that in order to defeat an aircraft carrier, an enemy would need to not only locate from thousands of miles away, but also fire on it from that same distant position. Even hypersonic weapons, this is still asking a bit much. Although the Pentagon has made considerable efforts over the past few years to nevertheless mitigate this threat. US aircraft carriers also have an almost limitless range of operations. This is especially true when we're talking about the Ford class, considering the limitless potential of its nuclear power plant. The work done on it does not halt, even if the enemy were to intercept the fuel tankers supplying the Navy. Another thing to consider is how nuclear power allows an aircraft carrier to perform deceptive maneuvers in any which direction over an extended period of time certainly beyond the range of enemy forces that may be trying to find this giant ship in the middle of the vast ocean. The Carrier Strike Group was formed for the purpose of countering enemy forces in closed waters or in the ocean at any given time of the year, and under all possible weather conditions. The aircraft deliver the main offensive firepower, while the ships in the strike group are responsible for supporting and protecting the aircraft carrier itself from enemy ordnance. However, the duties of the strike team are not necessarily as strict as they may seem. 
If needed, ships can also conduct offensive operations such as launching cruise missiles, while the air wing instead covers down on the defense of the aircraft carrier. An air wing placed on ships is capable of destroying opponents well before they can approach their intended targets. The U.S. Navy aircraft carriers are home to dozens of advanced F-A-18 fighters, the latest F-35, E-2D Advanced Hawkeye, MH-60R-S helicopters, as well as various types of drones. All of them are equipped with the latest technology, to include advanced sensor arrays, integrated control systems, and precision arms. Furthermore, the air wing also includes radar aircraft that can detect a potential threat hundreds of miles out from the aircraft carrier's current location. Growler electronic warfare aircraft will jam both the enemy radars and communication systems, thus nullifying their ability to call in reinforcements. The strike teams are not limited to any specific composition, and so this can change depending on the specific mission set or the current threat. Oftentimes, the strike group will include Supercarrier. This is the central part of the strike group and acts as its flagship. An air wing accommodating up to nine squadrons of one or two Triconderoga-class missile cruisers, under the control of the Aegis combat system, with three types of missiles, SM-2 and SM-6, as well as BGM-109 Tomahawk for long-range strikes. 2-3 Arleigh Burke-class missile destroyers, DDG, used for AAW and ASW defenses. These are equipped with Tomahawk missiles for strikes at medium ranges. Up to two attack submarines also equipped with Tomahawk missiles for attack at medium ranges. Their primary task is to cover the strike group from enemy surface ships and other submarines. Supply Ships Euler and Supply Ship AOE or AOR, as well as a supply class TAOE, which provides support via needed equipment, gear, etc. Out of the US Navy's nine aircraft carrier strike groups, eight of them are based out of the US mainland, while the other is in Japan. All of these were eventually renamed from the former groups of aircraft carriers, being the car groups and groups of cruiser destroyers CCDG to being the strike group of the aircraft carrier. The fleet response plan states that six strike teams must be ready to deploy at a moment's notice. The maximum period for notice should not exceed 30 days and two additional teams must be ready within 90 days. Thus, the aircraft patrol the airspace above the aircraft carrier, rushing in the direction of enemies if any are detected. If the planes somehow fail to neutralize the threats, then the battle cruisers with the Aegis will enter the action, directing air defense systems from surrounding ships to attack enemy vehicles or missiles. And finally, should the air defense system also fail to destroy the enemy forces, then the Phalanx CIWS air defense system with a 20mm Gatling cannon comes into play. RAM is also used as point protection systems. All of the carrier's defensive sensors and weapons are linked together through an advanced airborne command sensor in order to execute coordinated strikes and maneuvers against enemies. At this point, the US Navy has spent decades developing an advanced system capable of integrating all their military assets into a single integrated network. Now, everyone who is a node within this network can quickly receive key information regarding enemy activity, thus mitigating the risk of damage. Defending aircraft carriers is both redundant and multifaceted, so the likelihood that someone will successfully defeat one is less than 1 in 100. Even if the enemy were to break through the defense of an aircraft carrier, these beasts are almost impossible to sink not only due to their crazy dimensions, but also due to the hundreds of watertight compartments and thousands of tons of armor covering the vessel. The latest aircraft carriers out, such as the Ford class, sport additional protective measures that the US Navy has never publicly disclosed. Also, its ability to provide more than 600 megawatts of electricity to power onboard systems, and the network during combat operations can someday facilitate the future installation of either high-energy lasers, hence an electromagnetic railgun, or perhaps some other even more advanced weapons. 
It has probably become apparent by now that the only real method of sinking the steel giants would be nuclear weapons. The threat from ballistic missiles, which made appearances now and then, no longer causes concern. This weapon simply lacks the maneuverability to properly lock onto the aircraft carrier in the final moments of the flight. These days, tens of billions of dollars out of the state budget are allocated towards the development of aircraft carriers and their supports. Starting as gigantic military equipments, they have since become key players, both in the fight against external threats and in global military crisis. Today's modern air wing is significantly more skilled in performing its tasks than it was during Operation Desert Storm. It is now able to quickly acquire and strike over a thousand enemy targets per day, and possesses the ability to carry out large-scale operations without both the political restrictions and military risks commonly associated with ground bases. It would seem that nowadays the United States is quite the topic of discussion. Drones, of course, are most likely to take the lead in tomorrow's wars, but even in the best case scenario, unmanned or trans-atmospheric aircraft will not likely become a full-fledged replacement for an air wing for at least another couple of decades or so. Thus far, unmanned systems do not fully possess the capabilities required to consistently defeat mobile targets, and they depend on vulnerable and potentially inaccessible ground bases for control. At the same time, however, aircraft carriers continue to confidently fulfill their primary purpose, to maintain a peaceful sky over the heads of US citizens and the citizens of other countries across the world. And now, which aspect of the US Navy aircraft carrier's wide array of defenses seemed the most impressive? Let us know in the comments below! Also, if you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like and be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content like today's. As always, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video.